board, share the screen. Now, has that come up? Yep. Everybody aboard. Oh. Just a couple of people arriving. So we'll let them in and we'll start. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday's marketing webinar. Some good news today and some bad news. Yes. Good news is it's not me who's going to be doing it. But hey. What do you mean that's not bad news? So, so myself and my colleague Ryan will be your host for today's extravaganza. So before I hand over to him, I'll just uh, sort of, um, I, I, I'm today's warm up man. Yes, yeah, today's warm up man. So what's the normal format? Well, we are recording today's session. So if you fancy a second bite of, uh, of the cherry, then you're more than welcome. Well, you'll get a copy and it'll be on, the, on YouTube. So watch that later. Uh, you'll get a copy of the slides. There's always uh, the opportunity to have some funded one-to-one -one support through the council under the Grow My SME program. And uh, to introduce um, Ryan uh, from First Frame Productions. So uh, I'm going to hand over to him in a moment. But uh, as all, you know, I can't disappoint the audience. We always like to start uh, with a little bit of a quiz, a bit of a quiz on Mark on on video. So um, yeah, oh, I tell you what. Before I do, gosh, I had a busy weekend. Gosh, I had a busy weekend. Uh, they were filming Antiques Roadshow near me. So I went along and uh, I took with me a, um, a stuffed dog. And I said to the guy, he said, gosh, if this was in good condition, have you any idea what this might fetch? I said, yeah, probably some sticks and a tennis ball. So, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine today. He was saying, um, I'm giving up drinking between Monday and Friday. I said, I'm, I'm worried about them dehydrating. But, do you know, I really, I really like, um, do, you not like the, do you like the taste of Southern Comfort? Do you like the taste of Southern Comfort? I do. That, that ordinary comfort, it's just like fabric softener. So, um, right, anyway, less of this tomfoolery, less of this tomfoolery, we're gonna move on. And uh, going to be, oh, there's about five more people coming. So let's, can't let, can't leave people behind, can we? Can't do that. Right. Today's quiz. All about, you guessed it, video. But please feel free, use, use the chat line, and we'll start. Yeah. The oldest surviving film in existence was made in Leeds in 1878. True or false? Who felt? Oh, hang on. Who's going to tell you what? Michelle, Kevin, all, all say true. The answer is, it is true. It's still there. The Round Hay Garden scene. Well worth Googling. Yeah, great things happen in Leeds. Not at Ellen Road. But, um, nice things happen in Leeds. Next thing. Ooh, hang on. The first commercially sold colour TV set was available for purchase in. Now who's going to be a smarty pants and get that one? What year? Anybody on the chat? Oh, we've got a few guesses coming in here. No, Ryan, 1950. 1953 for Kevin. Warm, warm. 90, yeah. 1980. Come on, Ted, the year of my birth. Yeah, yeah. I believe that believe anything um right there we, 1954 you know yeah goodness gracious so here's a good one in 1976 which company launched the iconic video home service and the video cassette recorder now who knows that one let's whiz over to the chat line and see who's on it hit it who's gone who's on the chat line today you know Kevin goes for Decker Michelle goes for Sony Ryan goes for Sony Debbie goes for Vita I've got a guess for Amstrad and you're all not right it was JVC there we go and here's a personal question 
Here's a good one. When my, my, my dad, still alive, 85, good lad, was bought a video record in 1981. He dug up the receipt recently. How much did it cost? Now, here's a great question on, on we must have been mad or, or inflation. Ryan's gone for 450. Michelle's at 499. Cold, cold. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Del Boy, honestly. Yeah, we got it off the market. You're all, oh, Duncan. Duncan's warm. Duncan's warm. No. 800 pounds. Believe it. Goodness great. It took two people to carry it into the lounge. Yeah. The thief took it away on his own. Uh, just one of them. But uh, anyway, so there we go. Gosh, it wasn't what 800 pounds is worth now. And that's the first program we recorded. I watched it and watched it and watched it. There we go. I don't put it. You know, here's a quick bit trivia. Do you know that the episode with the Germans? was actually banned for a while. The BBC withdrew it because it was considered to be incorrect, politically incorrect. There we go. Right. We got, right, what's up next on the, what's up next? Oh, hang on, who's that? Who's that? Quiz time. You think, well, what's that got to do with, yeah, Ryan's on it today. Hey, do you realize the 800 quid's worth 2,700 pounds? It is. It is. You all remember him. Didn't we all brought up with him? Bob Holness. I'll have a K, please, Bob. Yeah, remember all those days? What am I going to do? What's that? i do with video. Because the next question is all about Blockbuster. How many, remember the good days we used to go and hire a video from Blockbuster? Here's a question for you. How many Blockbuster stores are still trade? Oh, well, we've got two guesses here. We've got Paul with one, Ryan with none, Michelle with none, Duncan with none. The answer, I believe, <laughs> as of as of eight o'clock this morning, was one. In the, in the bend, not in the bend, in bend in the great state of Oregon. I don't do accents. Right. You have got YouTube users upload more than how many hours of new video a minute? Aha! Who's going to complete that one then? 30,000? 100,000? Oh, Holy, thank you goodness. Google for one blockbuster store. It's good. How many hours of video? A new, a minute? 500 new, I might have got about 501 now. More than 500 hours of new video a minute. I know it to end. Right. By the end of 2021, 82% of all consumer web traffic will be video. True or false? You know, Ryan, you know, it is. It is. True. Funny how it seems. Oh, do, 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 do. oh it is. True. So there's a good enough reason why we should be doing video marketing. So here we go. We've got the last few questions. What happened on Valentine's Day 2005 in San Mateo, California? So that's a random question for you. What do you think happened there? What do you think happened? No, you see, the chat line's gone quiet. Oh, no, there's, there's, you know, there's always one. An earthquake. No, my other half said you felt the earth move last night. Uh, what was that one? Uh, what did you say? No, no. But quite Ryan's warm. Oh, Duncan, Duncan. Yeah, no, this is what I got my other half the other day uh, for Valentine's this year. She said she wanted, she wanted flowers and a card. So it was, it was the birth of YouTube. Duncan was on it there, the birth of YouTube. And you know how they got the idea for YouTube? Well, I'll tell you. This, there we are. Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson. You might remember the famous wardrobe malfunction at the Super Bowl halftime show. And these three guys who were PayPal employees said, I'd love to be able to watch that video again. And there you are. And the rest, they say, it's history. So there we go. Well, it's time. It was all planned. Well, who knows? I'm going to be quiet now. I'm going to let 
more people in who have been patiently waiting and I'm going to hand over the reins now to none other than my friend Mr. Ryan Mulhern who's going to take over the show. I'm just going to so I'll leave you in very capable hands. Well, thank you for that intro, Simon, and uh, nice to very briefly meet you all. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any jokes as good as Simon, and I don't have any uh, good quizzes either. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, Simon Ryan from First Frame, and uh, so my company creates regular video content for businesses, and more recently, in the last couple of years, I've been training businesses to create their own video content on their smartphones, okay? And that's what I'm planning to do to you, give you some insights into how you can actually go away after this, take some, uh, take some tips, and actually create your own videos. So... First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to score by error. I'm going to turn my emails off so, uh, so that I don't uh, ping through this. And I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go into a little uh, presentation. So one second. Right. Can you all see that okay? You see that, Simon? All right. Just give us a thumbs up. You can see that. Perfect. Yep. Right. Great. We're going to on. So today you're going to learn how to film and create your own quick, easy, and engaging smartphone videos for you on your smartphone use on social media and your website and you know to help you grow your business hopefully um, but first things first let's start with a little video shall we and guys what I want to do is please don't copy any of these okay this is a bit of a silly video to break the ice and um, whatever you do you know I see a lot of people making videos you know just because it's just because you can make a video on your smartphone doesn't mean you can make a professional one and that's the thing today it's kind of making professional videos I do tailor a lot of it to kind of towards LinkedIn but you know it's good for so other social channels as well so take a look at this and please remember, do not copy any of these bad errors. Now guys, I don't know about you, but there seems to be a lot of bad quality videos going around LinkedIn at the moment. God, does my chin look big in this or what? Now there's an argument to say that a bad quality video could have a bad effect on your personal brand. Now just because you've got a camera on your phone guys, doesn't mean that you can make a great quality video. I really need to get that tripod from Amazon. Video is a great way of talking directly to your audience. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you, talking to you. And it's a great way to really take time out to connect with your audience. Is that the time already? Flip for heck, let's go. <laughs> it's not a time to be vain. Hmm. My channel is quite good at this angle, actually. Now, LinkedIn can be a great environment to spread your message. <laughs> so, I'll leave you one last thing. Don't listen to me. Have a great day. Yes, guys, please do not copy any of them. And they are the mistakes that I see a lot of people making, you know, direct as people have built their personal brands over years and they go and ruin it by making a really bad video. Okay, so now I want to show you how to make your smartphone videos look brilliant. And, you know, literally I'm going to show you the fundamentals now. And, you know, once you, once you learn that, that is all you need. I'm going to talk to you about equipment and apps as well. But all you need is the fundamentals to make a good video, get it out there and start posting consistent video, okay? Get out of your comfort zone. Okay, there's a bit of a running theme here and it's looking up my nostrils, okay? So, and there's actually, it was probably a good timing, but there's something up my nostrils here as well. Um, don't worry, nothing, nothing dodgy, guys, you know what I mean? But, uh, but what I was going to say was, a lot of people automatically, straight away, they get, they get the phone and they do that for some reason. Now, they'll put, them, they'll put the phone down there. When really, what you want to do, you want to bring your, your phone to eye level. And you also, really, you want to bring it portrait as well, okay, guys? Obviously, especially you know, things like LinkedIn, a lot of people watch it on a desktop. If you, if you post portrait video, you're going to get the black lines down each side, which doesn't really look as professional as it can be. And that's what we want to do. So we want to bring it eye level and bring it landscape like that, okay? Obviously, if you're on Instagram doing stories, things like that, yes, do portrait. But for the majority, you can do landscape as well. Okay, the other thing is stability, guys, as well. Nobody likes shaky video. There's lots of different people that will watch video in different ways and take a different experience from it. So if you can make it as good as possible in all different ways, then you're going to hopefully have the most engagement out of it. So the next one again is stability. And I've got here just a kind of makeshift smartphone video tripod. Okay. And what I can do is here, I can just bring that up there. And again, I can bring it up to eye level. Hopefully, I just need to change the view because I can't actually see myself in it. Here we go. Yeah, perfect. Right, brilliant. One second. Perfect. Right. Yeah, so I've got that there and it's at eye level. But the great thing about when you have a tripod is you're not concentrating on holding the camera, okay? It just takes your mind off that, allows you to relax a bit, get in position. And the great thing is the microphone on these phones, if you're inside and you're quite close, 
it's, it's pretty good actually, especially on modern phones. So I would recommend being an arm's length away, okay? And there's a few reasons for that as well. The other reason is you don't be too close like that. It's a bit weird, but intrusive. You don't be too far away because, you know, people might not be able to hear you as well. And you don't want to be kind of down here either because, you know, you want to fill the screen. You want to show that, you, you know, you're confident. So you kind of want to be head and shoulders length away, a bit like that, okay? And you can move, move your body a bit as well. If you don't have a tripod, guys, what you can do is you can do a little hack like this. If you've got a smartphone plug, an iPhone plug or something like that, so you could just put your phone in the rungs there, bring some books up as well to eye level and do it that way. Or if you're stood, you've got a shelf, you want to stand up, do the same thing, put, put the books in there and plug in a shelf. And you've got yourself a makeshift tripod there. Or you could just lean up on something, whatever it may be, in the house. You don't need to go by a tripod, although they are you know, they're pretty cost effective. For it. And then the one, guys, is to find the lens. One of the biggest mistakes people make when filming videos on their smartphones is they look at themselves on the screen. Now that's a big no-no because the lens isn't actually on the screen. It's at the end of your phone. It's here in this circle, okay? So make sure you're filming but now find out where the lens is on your phone, okay? It's not the screen, okay? And the thing is when people, you know, if you see videos back and people are, are looking like this, you know, if I run this webinar the whole time like this, you know, talking to you, the audience, you'd be like, where's he looking? That's just weird. This guy doesn't seem very confident. So it's very important to find the lens. And another little tip you can do is you can actually put a post-it note over your screen, put an arrow towards the lens. So, you know, if you do, if your eyes do steer off, the arrow will point you back to the lens. And that's very, very important. Okay. And then your audience, you know, you've got to think you're talking to your audience. So they'll, they'll hopefully appreciate that. The next one, guys, is, is rule of thirds. Now, you know, if there's any photographers in the house today, you might appreciate what, what, what I'm on about. So it, basically, the human eye is attracted to these kind of points here, the four dots in particular. And the great thing is, you know, you've got a grid and you can use that grid to position yourself on the screen. So when you've got your phone in selfie mode, you can position yourself nicely. Now, the, the lines going down, you know, are kind of to position where your body should be. So you don't want your body in the middle, because a lot of times you are kind of the, the narrator, it's not always about yourself. So you might be talking about something. So I might be over to my left here and I'll be going, look at the state of my office today. I've got my gym in here because I'm making the studio and make, make a bit of a joke of it. But you could be in front of Big Ben, you could be in a nice view, you could be introducing something. So make sure you've got the space to show that and you're not right in the middle. Again, you can be the other side. When you're off to one side, just slowly, you know, slightly turn your body a little bit as well to the middle and look at the camera that way as well. And then the line going across as well, that kind of wants to go kind of through your head, so to speak. You know, you don't want your head out shot. Again, you don't want it right down. You want it nicely there. So you use that grid to your advantage, okay? And you know, rule of thirds appears in everything. A lot of artists use it, photographers. You will see it in films like this one. Again, see his body's turned to his right a little bit. And again, they're Morgan Freeman. And as well, if you're taking video, you're, you're creating video of something else, you know, th this is a great example. So this, this is a great example of rule of thirds. So straight away, my eye is attracted to that surfer, where the points meet, where that dot is, you know, the surfer. But also as well, if you look along the horizon, that line is going along the horizon as well. So, you know, think about that when you are creating some video, you know, especially when it's in terms of landscapes as well. But the great thing is, guys, you can get the grid on your phone. So if you've got your phones in front of you, you can follow this now. So if you've got an iPhone, you can just go into settings and then camera settings, go down to grid and just make sure that's clicked to green. And if you've also got an Android or something similar, you can go into camera settings, grid lines, make sure that's on as well. And we, we do a lot of, um, we do a lot of kind of work for companies who, who use Samsung phones. The modern Samsung phones, you actually have to go out of settings, go to take a photo or a video and then press the cog icon. And there should be something in there that says something about grid as well. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to all find that, okay? And by the way, if anybody has any questions along this, um, just feel free to put them in the chat, guys, and I will at certain times, I will try and remind myself to stop and to try and answer questions. If not, I can answer some questions at the end of the session, okay? So the next thing you want to do, guys, as well, I mean, sorry, what I was going to say was rule of thirds is if you're in a blank background and you want some animations on there or some text to get your point across, then you can be in a blank background, move to the thirds, and then every so, so often you can say bring a logo in or, or some sort of animation and some text to reiterate the point 
that you're talking about. So it could be tip one, tip two, tip three, things like that. So natural lights, you don't need to buy light. Today I've got this little, uh, this little ring light here, which is quite cool. Just adds a little bit of brightness to my face, you know, it's a little bit dark otherwise, but it adds a nice, nice glow um, and things like that. But you don't need that. You know, everybody's got a window, so you can use the window to use natural light. Now one of the big problems or big mistakes people make when I, one of my workshops, I normally host them in Leeds City Centre. It's a nice venue, you've got the Leeds City in the, in the background, but there's ceiling to floor windows. And what people do is, if you pretend the windows are behind me, they'll go, oh, that's a great view. I'm gonna make a video with that view behind me. Well, actually what the camera, what the, you know, what the camera on the phone does, is it does two, one of two things. If it exposes for outside, which is behind you, well, you're, you know, that's great, but you're gonna become a bit of a silhouette. So you're gonna be all kind of, you know, darkened out kind of thing, because of the sun and the background and things like that. So the city's gonna be in view, but you're not. And then the other side of things, if, if it exposes for yourself, that's great. But unfortunately, your background is going to be totally overexposed, okay? And it would defeat the object of actually getting out in the background. So what you actually want to do is instead of doing that, you want to bring your body 180 degrees and use the natural light to come onto your face. So, you know, I've got a light in front of me. Okay, you want the lights in front of you. You want that window in front of you. So you can stand right next to the window and have that, the light come onto your face then. But... We've all been working from home, you know, different areas, whatever it may be, and sometimes our house might be a bit of a mess. So don't make the mistake this guy made. made. Always make sure your background is presentable first, and don't do what this guy did, okay? So this guy's obviously on the news, you know, he's, 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 he's obviously quite a, a key figure in, in work and things like that, and he's gone on the news. I'm, I'm probably not even really listening to what he's saying. I'm looking at the pillows, the mess of the room, things like that, and, you know, he's just totally detrimental his personal brand in those few seconds, okay? So make sure if you what your background is, make sure it's nice, make sure it's relevant, not distracting, okay, guys, because it's very important. You want people to listen to you and engage with you, okay? So feel free to take a screenshot of that. They're the fundamentals in terms of making videos. I'm gonna go on to talk about equipment and apps next, but that is like, you know, with anything you do, guys, you wanna get the basics right first. So many people get a, get a phone, go straight to the apps, you know, Without being, uh, without, well, it's not swear, but without being crude, it's, you know, you can't polish a turd, you know what I mean? So it's like, you can't, you, you can't make a bad video better, really. And so many companies come to us and go, we filmed this video, can you make it any better? It's like, listen, we might as well film it again from scratch because, you, you, you know, you just can't do anything with that. Okay? So, I just need to crap a bit. So, the next thing, so you, you, you're able to make your videos. I'm just checking there's no, no questions, that's great. So you're able to make your videos, brilliant, and now you want to go into the right equipment, okay? So there's a few bits and bobs I'm going to show you now. And the first thing is, as I mentioned before, is a tripod. There's loads of different tripods you can get, and all you need to make your tripod, an ordinary tripod, into a smartphone video tripod is just one of these, okay? It's one of these smartphone video clamps, okay? And all it does is it screws onto the top of the, the tripod, and you put your tripod and you put your smartphone inside of there. Now you can get one of these mini tripods, which are quite cool. They're really cool if like you're on events or you're traveling, you don't want to do a bit, a bit of vlogging or something. So you can hold them, they've got a bit of weight to them as well. You can walk with them, you can put them on a shelf, you can put them on some books, whatever it may be, however it makes uh, however you feel comfortable doing it. Okay, and this is again a quick example if you've got a tripod at home, adding the smartphone clamp to it. So there you go, you set it up to the top of there. <clears throat> put your phone in. Always beware not to put it on top of any of the buttons because then it won't record. And then you can add some nice tilting movements and some panning movements as well, okay, just to bring, you know, to get some, you know, extra kind of features on your video, okay, so it's not just static, all right? The next one, again, very, very important, what I talked about, everyone engages in different ways. Lots of people are auditory, and if the sound is bad, they might switch off your video, okay? So this is a Smart Lab Plus, and all it does is, it clips onto your top, okay, and it basically just goes into the bottom of your phone, connects right into the bottom of your phone. And obviously it comes with a small jack, but what you can do is with that, you just basically, you can go and Google small jack to iPhone 11 or Samsung Galaxy phone, and you get a small adapter. Again, plug straight into the bottom of your phone, and then as soon as you press record, you go from that phone, it's going straight into your phone, which is really, really cool, and it just becomes, you know, the production value is a lot better. So listen to this example, 
Okay, I did it specifically, did it. it was quite windy. There was a stream next to me. So listen to the before and after to see how good the microphone is. You know, you can film in not quite noisy environments and people will be able to hear you. I've got a man for outside tripod and it is filming in full day, so I thought what you can do is you can get this amazing little piece of kit here. I think it was about £15 on Amazon and it's a smartphone adapter, so you can just plug it into a tripod. So what you do, so I mean, the quality is amazing. You know, just to give you an example, when I very first bought my microphone for my video production many, many years ago, I cost me £550. So you probably get more seen than what I spent, okay? So that's really, really good. So if you are thinking of bringing video into your strategy, then it's very important to actually have that, okay? The next thing is quite cool, and it's a gimbal. Essentially, it's something you hold, it's got a motor on it, and it helps keep your phone steady when you're walking, okay? So you can move your arms different ways, and it, you know, it allows you to kind of have a nice smooth shot, and it's really good for establishing shots. Now, again, I'm gonna show you a bit of a before and after. This is when we're lucky enough to travel. You know, I could go and see my mum and dad at the, the nice big house in Mallorca here. And um, anyway, this is a nice uh, establishing shot into the, into the venue. And this is, not a, uh, this is not the shot that I'd like. So I'm gonna show you one which is handheld, which is this one. I'm gonna show you one that's shot on the gimbal, okay? So really not very good, not a great opening shot, very shaky. Okay, but how can we improve that on the gimbal? Let's have a look. Much smoother. Yeah, and I say, yeah, do you know what? I'd use that as an opening shot. It's, it's much, much better. Just going to see something. We've got a, uh, we've got a couple of things in the chat. I have a smart lab. Which, okay, so this is for Liz Drury voiceovers. Oh, Liz, I might have a job for you, actually, so it'll be good to connect after. Uh, I have a smart lab flash, which I connected to my DSLR. It's brilliant that I have needed to buy an extension. Yes, I totally get you. I had to buy an extension as well. Don't think the, the extensions always work that great, but uh, but no, hundred percent. They're only you know they're they're great for a smartphone because they kind of have that distance you know that I just mentioned the arm's length. But there are things that you can buy as well. And you can actually buy ones that have two mics on, so you could do a little podcast on a smartphone as well. So, uh, but thank you for that, Liz. So something else. This isn't equipment, but this is more going on to kind of a few apps or something you can do. So there's something called time lapse which you can do as well which essentially brings, you know, brings your video to life a little bit. It speeds up time, okay? So what it does is, you know, if you've got an iPhone, it's actually free on your, on your camera roll. It's actually already in there. So you've got photo, video, slow motion, and you've got time lapse. And don't worry if you've got an Android and it's not on your phone, you can just download a free app called Frame Lapse or something else. If you just type in time lapse um, in the Google Play Store or something like that, it's great. But a couple of tips when shooting a time lapse, make sure it's always on a tripod and it's on something steady. I've got like a suction mount in my car that I put it onto, put the smartphone clamp onto there and then press record to start it. And then when you want to finish it, press record again. Within about 30 seconds, it will make that video for you, which will look something like this. Okay, so it's speeding up time, but again, like I say, it brings your story to life. Uh, Pauline, I've got a quick question here. Any way to cut glare when filming? You could get a bit of tracing paper, Pauline, and put that in front of a window if that's what you mean. Or you can actually, on your phone, you, what you can do in, in photo mode, you can actually, ex if you can see that, you can expose by keeping your finger down and then you slide, you've got this slider there where it actually brings down the exposure up and down. So you could try doing something like that. You can try and manually override the exposure as well. Otherwise, yeah, you use like a, use a bit of tracing paper or something that's kind of see-through, but it'll block a bit of the sun as well, okay? So that's quite cool. Or try and film in some shade or something like that. So what we're going to do next. So yeah, get a bit more of a, a bit more, another little time lapse as well, just to kind of show you how it works. So this is probably, I don't know, a 10 minute journey and it's been cut into about 30 seconds, okay? But again, you imagine this to music, this could be a video on its own or this could be a part of a longer video, okay? Okay, any other questions before I go into apps, the best applications? Let me just see if there. Hello guys, hope you're well. So I'm down here at Manhattan. Sorry, I was just trying to press chat there. One second, just gonna go back up. 
So now I'm going to go to the best app. So you've learned the fundamentals of how to film. You've got your equipment. Now you want to learn how to edit, okay? You know, and it can be, it can be very easy to edit. You know, all I'll say, you know, there's so many apps out there, guys. It's very important to learn, you know, that, you know, you can go on so many different apps and different things, but work out what you want to achieve with your video and then find the right app that's going to do that, okay? So many of the apps essentially are just the same. The fundamentals about editing are the same. You know, you've got your clips, you've got a timeline, you've got music, transitions, templates, things like that, okay? So work out, you know, what, what app you want to use. I'm going to show you a couple now and then work out your videos now. Get used to it. Uh, and just get kind of good using the apps and, and working out because they can all do really great things and you can make good videos with us. So there's no excuse really. So the first app I'm going to show you is called the Quick App and it's a free app. All these apps are free on iPhone and Android and it's Q-U-I-K. There is no C in it. It's made by GoPro. Okay. And essentially what it does is it, you, you upload all your clips to it and essentially it uses artificial intelligence to edit your video. Okay. Which can be amazing. I'll tell you what a great example to use this app is. When we're allowed to, and you can go on holiday again, you got all your holiday snaps and photos, you put it into Quick, and it actually makes a video with all the music and everything like that, and it's absolutely genius, you know what I mean? Because I remember I used to go on holiday every year, took my camera, I just never got around to editing it. So um, this is a really, really cool app that can do that. But what, what I want to show you here is I went to an event in Leeds, it was quite a good networking event, and I wanted just to show a quick behind the scenes, a quick story of, of what to expect at the event. Now, looking back, I can make the video shorter if I wanted, but I wanted to do a quick piece of the camera, then quickly just show how to, you know, what, what happened at the event. And all I did was I did about 10 seconds, 10 clips of 10 seconds each. I did all handheld, brought my elbows in, did that, 10 seconds of that establishing shot, 10 seconds of people coming in, 10 seconds of food, etc. Put it into quick and it made this video. Obviously, it did a few tweaks. The only thing not done in quick here is the actual captions or the subtitles. So have a little uh, look at this. Hello guys, hope you're well. So I'm down here at Manhattan at Green Street today and I'm down here for the Business Catalyst Lunch, a new networking event I've never been to. So I'm uh, really looking forward to getting and meeting some new people. Let's go and take a look. Okay, so that was all done in an app, literally, it took me less than five minutes to edit it because it just does it for you. You know, it's got loads of templates, transition, things like that. Really, really cool app. Go and check it out. You know, go out for, just get out of the house if you can, take a few shots or whatever and put it in the app and see what it can do. Okay, the next one is a little bit more of a man manual app. Okay, you can do a little bit more, have a bit more control over it as well. And it's called InShot. It's really, really cool. Again, it's a free app. And, you know, you can put all your clips in there and that, just be a bit more manual with it, okay? And, you know, add some music, transitions, but, but without it being kind of controlled. And you can move things around and things. And another thing I like about this app is it can actually help you make a square video. Excuse me. So, if I can go down. So what I can do is I can take my video in here that's rectangular. But what I like to do is I like to make my video square because it adds, you know, it kind of take, fills up a bit of space. You can get a nice title on the top. And then you can get your captions actually put on the bottom as well. Okay, so it takes up a bit of space and just kind of it attracts more attention. So what you want to do with it is you want to kind of stop the scroll. You can add some images, bring in logos, whatever it may be, bring in some music, and uh, you know actually have some B-roll in there. So it's a really cool app. So go and check it out. There's loads of little things you can do in there. You can pay for kind of you, they do a little upsells in there as well, but you don't really need to pay for anything. There's, you've got enough on the basic version of that app as well. Okay. Now I'm going to talk a little, little about, you know, one of the most common questions is, Ryan, how do I make captions in my videos? How do I do subtitles? So they're actually called closed captions. And they reckon 80% uh, of people now read video rather than actually watch it with the sound on. You know, when we're working, when things are back normal, people are on the busy commute 
or they're in a busy office, so you know they want to watch the videos with the sound off. And so what we need to do is we need to add captions to our videos so people can read them. Okay, so if you're not adding captions to your videos, you might be missing out on some of your audience. Okay, so what you can use is an app such as if you've got an iPhone, mix captions, or if you've got an Android, something called AutoCap. And what these do is you can upload your video to the apps and within less than a minute, they'll create your captions for you. Now, one thing I will say, they're not always 100% accurate, but if you watch this little video here, if you look at the bottom of my video around there, I'm gonna play, yeah. I upload it, I press generate captions, upload the, the video, and hey presto, there you go, there's my captions come to the bottom. But don't worry if, it's, if the text isn't right, because underneath, you've got all the text there, and you can actually go into those text boxes and actually edit that text there, so it's, it's all good. So yeah, some of them, sometimes it gets it really wrong. Um, some apps are better than others as well, but this is quite a cool app, and you know, the fact it does it for you within a minute is, you know, it's, it's, intro it's just amazing. User. So another one again, apologies if you've got an Android, but if you've got an iPhone, again, another thing you can use is called Clips, and this is brilliant because it uses artificial intelligence to actually bring up your captions as you speak and burns them into your video, so you can just, make a video on the app, export it, it'll have your captions in there, and again, you can change them as well. I'll very quickly show you a quick example of a screen recording. So, one second. So this is a screen recording of the app in use. So I'm just testing out the new Clips app, and I want to record my voice speaking whilst I'm speaking. Okay, so you don't actually have to speak like a robot. Um, I was just testing it. I used to speak, I, mean, I sometimes speak quite quickly, and sometimes it used to miss out words. But it can go wrong as well, guys. So just check out this so video. Listen to what I'm saying and read what I'm saying as well. So I'm just walking to Leeds Arena right now for a meeting. And I thought I'd just quickly check out the clips up. Yeah, it's a shaky video. You probably can't hear me. But let's see how good this app is and let's see if I actually write down the real subtitles that I want to say. Okay, not the best. Um, but again, you can correct that. So if you go into the app, underneath, as soon as you spoke, underneath your video, all your captions will be written down. Okay, so that's, I mean, again, this app is unreal for what it can do within seconds. And if you've got the words wrong, you're just going to correct them again, okay? Simple as that. Okay, and then what you can do is as well, one second, you can also go in and you can change the style of your captions, of your subtitles at, after your video. You could do it before or you can do it after as well, which is really, really cool. You can add some filters on there, some are a bit silly, uh, and then you can add some, if you want to add some something from Toy Story, yeah, you know, that's up to you, but I wouldn't recommend it, especially not on LinkedIn. And the other, the final thing that I will recommend to you, this is what we use for all our clients, so if my editor was gonna write captions, it might take him an hour or two. You know, that's a waste of kind of his time and, and my time as well. So for literally $1.25 per minute of video, we can upload our clients' videos, and Rev.com will, will actually write the captions for us. Now send us back something called an SRT file, which we can then upload to LinkedIn or we can put into the edit suite. Now, one thing they do now is for an extra 25 cents per minute of video, so like $1.50 per minute, they actually burn your captions into your video. So you give them your video, and they give you your video back with the captions already burnt in. And you can actually change the style, you can check them before you export it, and download it, that it's all correct. I haven't got an example of that because it's only just come up, come about uh, re recently using that. Um, so I'm struggling to get a few words out today, guys. As I've said to Simon, I had a metal screw put in my mouth. Um, my, so I've got no left front tooth at the moment, but I've got about seven stitches around it, which is just lovely when you're running a webinar. Um, I had to do one the day after, which was yeah, quite a challenge. So now what I'm gonna show you, if, if you just download the SRT file from rev.com, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now, it's a little bit dated, this video. It says $1 per minute. But what you do is go on services and make sure you do click captions, okay? Don't click transcription. It's always captions. Then you upload your video or upload your files. You can paste it from a YouTube click as well or paste it from an Earl on a website. And then what they'll do is they'll tell you how much it's going to be. You find your video, they tell you how much it's going to be, etc. You pay there and then. Again, most of the time it's about $2, which is absolutely nothing for the time it actually saves you as well. And then if you want to know how to upload it to LinkedIn, what you do is you go on, you write your post. So they'll send you back an SRT file 
and this is what I'm going to show you how to do now. So you go and you write your post, tag people in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then what you do is you go to video icon, you go and find your video. I'd always recommend saving your SRT file in the same folder as your video as well, just so you know where it is. Excuse me. So you find your video, and then there'll be a little icon that comes up with a pencil. It's been updated now. It's just it's just something that says edit. Excuse me, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, you go. You're speaking so fast. I can't keep up. I'm so oh, sorry. Right. Sorry, it must be my. Uh, I did say before I speak fast. Yeah. I think <laughs> this is being recorded as well. So if you. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. No problem. No thank you, you can put it on a half speed if you need to. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, sorry, I'm probably mumbling a bit just from going on about this bit as well. But yeah, essentially, you go on onto LinkedIn, upload your video, go to the pencil, and then you can get this little bit here, which says video caption file SRT. So you click in there, and then you find your SRT file as well. And if you upload that with your video, then it will appear when, when your post goes out, okay? But like I said, uh, ref.com does it all for you now. So you can just use that. I highly recommend it. It's going to save you time. Um, and it's essentially going to probably save you money in the long run as well. Okay, I'm just going to go have a little look at a few questions. Um, how am I doing for time? Yeah, probably about 10 minutes left. Okay, Caroline, do I only edit using phone? No, I actually, uh, a lot of the time, obviously I've got an editor now, but we'll, we'll use Premiere Pro on a, on a Mac. So it's just, it's a lot easier. But a lot of times I do it, on the, I edit on the phone as well, if I'm out and about and things like that as well. You know, it can be. So I do a bit of both, to be fair. Um, but I do find it easier, you know, just using your computers and more, just user friendly, really. Um, voiceovers, I, I started using the script a few weeks ago to add captions. The first three hours are free, and I've still got quite a lot left as I've only been doing three to four minute videos a week. That's cool, uh, Liz. Yeah, there's lots of different things you can do. There's so many caption apps. Again, this is just the one I use. I think Rev for me has been the most consistent one I've used over the years, but there, there's so many things. There's, there's Subly. There's uh, Zub titles. There's all sorts of ones. They always try and get you to sign up. So uh, ref.com for me, you can pay every time you use it. Um, and that's, that's how I like to use it, okay? So you know how to film. You've got your equipment. You've got your apps. Now I want to show you five ways to make the video stand out. You know, social media is so noisy these days. There's lots of, there's lots of boring stuff on there. So you want to make sure your videos stand out, okay? Stand out from the crowd. So there's five ways in which you can do that. So the first thing is, when you, video, when you scroll down, you see a video, the first split screen or, or you know, free screen is going to be what, what your thumbnail is. And a lot of times it's a first split second of your video, which might a lot of times have you in a bit of a bad way where your face, your eyes are closed or you're doing a bit of a funny face because it takes your first second. So what you can do is you can upload a thumbnail to do that. So your thumbnail is what people will see for the first split second of your video. And you want to use that to entice people in. Okay, so if you go on YouTube, they're all thumbnails to entice people in. So you can go on something, um, you can use Photoshop if you want, or you can actually go on something called Canva. So on Canva, it's got loads of different templates. You just pick a template, you can change it into your brand colors. So I've had an image of me here and I've changed the text as well to try and entice people in to watch my video. Okay, so then once you've got that, you can upload that to LinkedIn, or you can either put it at the start of your video, a little kind of half second, and then it will just use that and that will be what people see when they're scrolling down. So thumbnails are really important. I'd really check them out, you know, go and go on, go on YouTube and see how to make them properly because it really will help engage and, and drive engagement to your videos and, and rise engagement. The next thing is, obviously this is a widescreen video, but you can add the top and bottom bars as well, which, which kind of, you know, makes a bit more space. You can then add colors to it. My branding is orange, so I'd actually add orange, add them all in orange so people, you know, my videos become recognizable each time. Then you could have a catchy title as well, more ways to draw people in to watch your videos. You know, what are you, what are you actually doing for them? So five ways to make your video stand out. Wow. Okay, that's brilliant. So I want to watch this video. And then from there, you've got your top space for your title and you've got your bottom space for your captions or your subtitles. And then last but not least, if you want to be creative and get some B-roll, go out and get some cool footage or something, you can actually add some B-roll as well. So I've just got a couple of questions again, guys. One from Nettie is, do you add a photo or does it use a first frame of video? Well, if you don't use a photo, Nettie, it, it will use a first frame of video. 
So you, if you add the photo, you can add it to the thumbnail in LinkedIn, or you can actually add it to the start in your edit suite. You can add that image to the very, very start so that it just plays that straight away and that becomes your thumbnail. And also Gary, can you add a thumbnail? Yeah, you can, you can, add, a, you can add your photo in Quick again, or any other, any other edit suite. You just bring that image into Quick and again, have it at the start. You just wanna make sure it's the same dimensions as your video, okay, so it doesn't look off, okay, so I've done that before and it doesn't look very good. So you wanna make sure it's probably 19, 20 by 1080 pixels, okay, if you shoot in HD, that is. Yeah, yeah, you can, uh, you can add your, your thumbnail, a bit like, a bit where I showed you how to add an SRT file, that's now been updated, so it says, you, once you've uploaded your video, you click on edit, and it'll actually allow you to upload an SRT file, and below that, you can actually add a thumbnail as well. Uh, Netting the dimensions at 1080p. That's if you're filming in 1080p. If it's 4K, it'll be something like double, like, like 2160 or something along those lines. Okay. So again, you 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 know you're starting to add video into your marketing strategy. But what types of video are you going to start making, guys? Okay. You know that's very important. A lot of people just go for the salesy video, the corporate video, and it's just it's not going to work. People don't want to be sold to these days. You know what I mean? So it's all about warming them up, which is still selling. And I'm sure Simon will be able to teach you about that as well. But it's selling in a good way. It's giving advice. It's creating relationships, okay? It's, it's building trust and being consistent. So one video could be, you know, do how-to videos. Can you give advice to your audience on a regular occasion? Can you do a vlog and talk about something informative? Or hey can you show people a bit of behind the scenes, a day in the life of your business, you know, because people like to see what you're doing. They want to see how you make things, how you produce things in the office or what, what you're doing on location. And also one little bonus thing as well, it's client testimonials. These are great, especially for having on your website, for building trust, you know, people by people. And if you want to get, you know, more clients of the same, well, those might see the testimonials on your website and things and see, see um, and then kind of want to work, you know, things like that and learn more about your business. So again, nearly getting to the end now, but I just want to show you a little bit what videos will make up your video marketing strategy and kind of create a bit of a customer journey through video. So first of all, again, you're gonna you're gonna find these people on social media. That they sorry they they want to find you on social media. So the first thing is again, you want to give that advice. You want to be giving regular tips, okay? You know, weekly tips if you can do free advice. So they're gonna warm to you. Hopefully, follow you, and then when they need your service, they might kind of buy into it. But you know, then you've got your thought leadership videos, also quite interesting videos to repurpose. Then you get into your website, which you might have an about us video. You know, some testimonials and our promotional videos, some product videos. So they're going through the, through the journey, and hopefully if all the videos are done right and they're authentic, they get to the end of the journey, or even beforehand, and they'll contact you. Chances are they'll know all about you, and they'll literally be ready to buy, they'll be ready to spend money with you, okay? And then how often do you, you, know, do you want to post as well? If you're just getting started, I would try and post once per week, okay? But what you can do is you don't need to do, wait, leave it every Monday, you know, that's quite overwhelming. What you can do is you could take a day out, script 12 videos, take another day out, and then create 12 videos and edit 12 videos. Then you've got three months worth of weekly content. And if you look back after three months, guys, you know, that is, that is how you can measure your progress. And hopefully you should have seen some change in that time if the videos are done properly, okay? The last slide, Nettie, was it this one? Take a sc quick screenshot. I'm pretty much done now anyway. Um, yeah, so Caroline, good editing software on your computer. I, I just recommend Premiere Pro, absolutely amazing. You can get some free software as well. I just, I just Google some stuff in there, but it's uh, Premiere is really good. It's 15 pound a month, but you know, if you're gonna invest in video, that isn't a lot to invest and it's really, really good. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna go on about native, but yeah, if you're uploading to YouTube or uh, to LinkedIn or anything like that, make sure you upload your actual video file. Don't do it through YouTube because on LinkedIn, it will suppress your posts. Okay, and uh, you can get some great stats as well from your videos as well, things like that. But I think I've given you a lot of information. I don't want to, I, I don't want to overwhelm you. It was just kind of I think you've taken in a lot now as well. So uh, I'm getting slightly lightheaded as well, guys, because uh, since it's medication <laughs> one. But yeah, I'm going to get to the end now. But if if you guys, want, you know, if you've got any more questions or anything, I, I can leave it open now for the chat. But also, feel free to add me on LinkedIn. I do give you know weekly tips on there. There's loads on my profile. Feel free to connect with me and there'll be loads on there. But um, I'm gonna hand it back to Simon now, and if anybody's got any questions, um, I'll let you ask now. Well, Lion, 
Well, that was fantastic. And I really appreciate that. And, and, and judging by uh, the comments we're seeing coming in, uh, that, that was great. And I just want to say a big shout out to Ryan, because I asked Ryan to, to join me on this webinar. Little did I know that he'd been under the knife. It were so a real a real big thank you for, for doing that do you know what i've got a confession i've got a confession while i was on while i was on the video do you know what i did i uploaded quick and and did some did i did it while i was while um while we we're on the uh, uh webinar so that's fantastic so i i know i've learned a lot and i'm sure others have so we're going to I want a big thank you to, to Ryan. Has anybody got any further questions? I think you're answering them now. The two things to remember on, on, on this, as we do on the webinars all the time, you will um, get a copy of the slides. So you'll, you'll get that, you'll get a PDF copy of, of, of what, and I'll arrange that with, um, with, with Ryan. Naturally, we cover, as always, every week we cover a lot of information, and uh, so the, the recording is there as well, so people want to, to look at it at their own, their own, uh, their own leisure. And what did, did you have a little? Didn't you have a little um, thing you wanted us to do as well, Ryan, to finish off? Do you know the old, the old, the old, um, the old uh, little? Uh, oh yes, oh, I did. We missed it. You know what? I'm glad. I'm glad. If everybody could put their videos on. Which is a bit I, just, I, like do, I like to do something very quickly, guys, for social media, if that's all right. It's a bit of a laugh as well, a bit of a laugh. And a, yes, everyone put your videos on. There we go. Just for okay, that's just it. 10 yeah. seconds. And get your phone out. Yep. Okay, one second. Here we go. Yeah, we just go. record on this. One second, guys. Your technology's catching up. Come on, where are we? Right, cool. Hopefully that's recording now. So, everybody... Get get your torch on on your phone if you know how to do that, okay? Yeah. Everyone's got the torch on? Yeah, yeah. It's very cheesy, but let's, let's do a little Mexican wave, guys. Thank you very much for having me today. I hope you've all enjoyed it. And uh, I hope, yeah, I look forward to seeing your videos. Feel free to tag me in on LinkedIn or whatever. But yeah, you're all smartphone video ready. And the key now is, guys, to practice, okay? Don't leave it too long because... Uh, you'll just forget everything. So yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I hope you've, uh, you've taken in some good advice there, guys. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Ryan. I'm really grateful. You know, I think one of the best things I have in, in my business is, uh, is to have people like you I can rely on because you know, we don't, you know, to have the expertise. So we're more than happy if, if well, you know, to run a, another webinar on video marketing. If you, re you know, it's a bit like, you remember Bullseye? If you want to come back next week you can have a, a speedboat but if you want again we're more than happy to um to do to do that again yeah if you want me to do one on a video marketing in terms of how to you know video distribution because yeah. obviously one thing we teach as well with our clients now is actually how to get results from your videos how to but, it's all right making videos but getting them seen in the right places so we're we're, we're working on a a beta webinar so to speak so it'd be a good place to if you guys want me to test it and give me some feedback um, but there'll be a lot, lots of good information in there as well. Fantastic. So, uh, well, let's put that in the diary. Can, can you do a video on how to make people look 10 years younger on camera? Because, I, you know, I'm, I think I want to attend that one. You know, yeah, it's called, it's called Botox, Simon, mate. No, no problem, you know. All oh, right, well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I've got to always get, get good posture as well, haven't you, on camera as well. So. That's it. I'll have the chin up. You know, chin don't chin don't up. like that. When, when do I breathe out? <laughs> oh, do it. Right. So... We, just, so if anyone wants to connect with Ryan, he's on LinkedIn, Mr. Ryan Mulhern, First Frame Productions. So if you want to connect, I know we want you, you had to talk to Liz about voiceovers as well, but we'll, we'll send those, the, uh, the details out in the thing. But without further, I know what I'm going to do, I'm going to give Ryan a little round of applause. Thank you guys, much appreciated. Very humble. Fantastic. And without further ado, we're back next week, you know, Tuesday. And what is next week? Well, I'll be talking all about online advertising. How am I going to spend money on Facebook ads, Twitter ads, Google ads? Where should I spend my money or should I spend my money? So I'll be, I'll be talking about that next week and hopefully you'll see myself and Ryan again in the near future. So stay safe, enjoy the budget 
Uh, uh, right. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Cheers, guys. Take care. Yeah, Bye.